Hi, this is Gina with Resplendent Daughter Ministries. Thanks for visiting today. Let's open in prayer. Father, thank you for this time together, and I pray that as we explore these two little-known people from Scripture, that you'll enlighten our hearts, that you'll open our eyes and our ears and our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, so today we find ourselves at the end of our study of Colossians. If you've been following along in the vlog for some time, you know that we've been in Colossians for several days. Today we're going to look at two very little known people from the Bible that are mentioned here in Colossians 4, 15 through 17. The majority of this chapter, particularly the second half of this last chapter, are devoted to personal greetings and admonitions. And so we're going to examine a couple of those in our time together. Colossians 4, 15 through 17 says this, Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters who are in Laodicea, and to Nympha and the church that meets in her house. And after you've read this letter, have it read to the church of Laodicea. In turn, read the letter from Laodicea as well. And tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry you received in the Lord. Nympha, a woman of Laodicea, was apparently the leader of the Laodicean church. It met in her house. This is the only time she's mentioned in scripture Nympha must have been a rather wealthy woman to have a house large enough to host a small church, and there is some disagreement, oddly enough, as to whether Nympha was a woman or a man. Most modern Bible scholars agree that her name was changed to the masculine Nympha during the Middle Ages by Catholic scribes who assumed that because the feminine version was given of the name, they assumed they were looking at an editing error. Colossae and Laodicea were small towns close together, which is why Paul directed that they share letters with each other. I'm fascinated by the apparently missing Laodicean letter from Paul, as it's mentioned in verse 16, but was not preserved in perpetuity nor was it incorporated into our holy scriptural canon. As for Archippus, or Archippus, depending on how you want to pronounce it, the, the latter pronunciation is probably correct, the admonition from Paul to him is one for all Christians. You're a Christian, but you aren't in ministry. The word for ministry there in the Greek is diakonian, which... Uh, is where we get our word deacon. So you say you're a Christian, but you're not in ministry? Wrong. Every Christian is or should be a minister. I don't mean in the ecclesiastical, vocational, full-time occupational sense necessarily. But if we're all given spiritual gifts, then we should exercise them. I mean, how else should we exercise our spiritual gifts except in some kind of ministry? Here's the thing. I don't think the Lord has expected us to, as Christians, constantly sit around and just be takers. Um, a friend of mine wrote a blog recently entitled, A Good Deal. Salvation through Jesus Christ is the best deal of all. And if we really believe that, how is it that we do things like hire a pastor full-time and then expect him to do all the ministry? Certainly, Paul did not believe that such delegation of ministry is scriptural. Otherwise, why would he have sent that message to Archippus? And who was this dude anyway? It appears that he was just a regular dude, not some megachurch leader. He's mentioned in Philemon chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 as being a fellow soldier with Paul. 
And the word ministry in the Greek, as I've already mentioned, is um, diaconian or diaconate or deacon in the English. But it's used in a more general sense, not to indicate that Archippus was an actual deacon. And some have postulated that he was the leader of the Colossian church. That may have been the case, as he's mentioned practically in the same sentence as Nympha, who was the leader of the Laodicean church. Regardless of these meanderings and speculations, let's pray for each other that each of us clings close to Jesus for the remainder of our days and that we boldly, courageously step out to fulfill the callings he has given to each of us, brick by brick, building on the cornerstone, the firm foundation, who is Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we are so grateful to you for your many wonderful gifts. Namely, first of all, the gift of your son. And then for the individual spiritual gifts you've given to each of us. May we take that admonition that you gave through Paul to Archippus. May we take that to heart. And may we serve you wholly in holiness with fervor, exercising faithfully the gifts that you gave us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it is always such a pleasure to be with you here on the Empower channel. And I thank you for taking your time to stop by. I hope, though, that you won't just watch me and my video blogs, my vlogs, but that you'll also check out the other wonderfully talented vloggers who vlog here at Empower. We'd love to have your comments on our vlogs, and uh, we'll do our best to respond to them. Also, you can see my blog address if you're a reader rather than a watcher. Uh, you can see my blog address on the screen. I invite you to stop by and stay a while and comment and share all of this content if it blesses you. Finally, you can reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle's on the screen. I'd love to hear from you there as well.